A uniformly tapering conical wire is made from a material of Young's modulus Y and has a normal unextended length capital. The radii at the upper and the lower ends of this uh, conical wire have values capital R and 3 capital R respectively. The upper end of the wire is fixed to a rigid support and a mass capital M is suspended from its lower end. The equilibrium extended uh, length of this wire would uh, equal. Okay, so all options have capital L into 1 plus something and that something is mg upon pi y r squared in every term. The only difference being the constants 2 by 9, 1 by 9, 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. So basically uh, if we find the extension of the wire, the total extension of the wire, we can easily, uh, well we, we can say that that's our answer. Right? And even then mg up uh, there mg upon pi by r squared is there. We just need to find the coefficient. Alright, let's draw the wire now. Okay. Now see uh tapering okay is something which we may refer to as conversion. Okay, like this. That's what we call tapering. If you take the funnel, okay, it has this uh, decreasing radius, right? That's tapering. And, and that's a term that we use in manufacturing uh, engineering. Okay, tapering. Cool. Now, can we draw the figure? Yes. So, suppose uh, this is our uh, axis. Now, we have to exaggerate it. Uh, okay. Upper end, suppose it has radius r. So, here we have to draw thrice uh, as long as that because that's our uh, radius 3r. Okay. And then... Uh, this is going to be the well a section I would say okay this is going to be a section of that wire something like this I don't think I've got it right but hope you don't mind that Okay, so this is the wire, this is a cross section of the wire rather, the cross section of the wire, okay? Okay, uh, ex unextended length is L, okay, unextended length is capital L, radii are capital R and uh, capital T are respectively, the upper end of the wire is fixed to a rigid support, okay, and a mass M is suspended from its lower end. Okay, the equilibrium extended length of this wire would equal this. Okay, now uh, first I want to try to solve this problem qualitatively in the sense that I will imagine two wires. Okay, I will imagine uh, two wires. Uh, wire 1 with uh, radius capital R and wire 2 with uh, radius capital 3R and uh, I'm s I can say that the elongation that this particular wire is going to produce will be in between the elongations of the uh, two hypothetical wires of radia capital R and capital 3R respectively. That is what I'm saying. Okay. Cool. And under the same loading condition, same length. Okay. So what is delta L by Hooke's law? Okay. Delta L is F L upon A Y. Okay, I can try that F upon A is our uh, sigma. Delta L upon L is our strain into Y. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, F is same. So F is mg. L is the length capital L. Uh, y is also same. So what is different is, okay, what is different? Mm, radius is different so area will be different so mg uh, l by y into pi into uh, radius squared okay now for wire 1 okay for wire 1 radius is actually capital R so it will be simply mg capital L upon pi y r squared 
and for y2 how much will it be mg capital l upon pi y into 9r square by 9 because it has a radius 3r so its square will obviously be 9r square okay so which will have longer or larger elongation first wire the second wire will have nine times smaller than that okay well, obviously because it has thicker okay cool so our uh, extension will be well okay the coefficient okay i should say coefficient because that mg upon pi by r squared is uh, still there with l mg l upon pi by r squared that should be coefficient okay that should be less than 1 but greater than 1 by 9 are all options like that <sighs> okay so definitely not 1 by 9 so mm. okay now we don't know okay whether it's 2 by 9 1 upon 3 or 2 upon 3 so qualitatively we could eliminate only one option couldn't eliminate the other one so we have to now try something else to uh, solve this particular problem okay and what will, what will that be that will be integration now why is integration required we should first argue for that okay why is integration required first of all to solve this problem okay and then uh, we can uh, go for the actual mathematical structure okay wait uh, let's take this problem a bit down shift it down much yeah okay i think we are now in a space for that theek okay. hai okay now we were saying why integration is required so let me write it integration is required okay integration is required because area is not constant throughout the wire okay hope you got that area is not constant throughout the wire is it clear yes sir now now comes the main point if integration is required then two th three things will be there okay which three things first uh, the variable of integration will be there okay variable of integration is there then its limits will be there and thirdly the integrand will be there okay variable of integration limits and obviously the integrand okay now what i am going to assume as my variable of integration is uh, the distance of that particular uh, elemental uh, i would say area from our uh, top okay so let let the variable of integration be x and let it vary from 0 to l okay which means this is something that i'm considering it as x okay i'm considering this as x okay and i'll consider a disk okay i will consider a disk whose uh, radius is actually sorry whose radius is actually okay we can find that radius now this is typical integration process so suppose i say that this has thickness dx okay this has thickness dx so i'm go only going to consider that part and one more thing which we already seen we imagine the tapered wire okay we imagine the tapered wire to be a collection of many small wires okay many small wires in series now okay i can take another wire here another thickness here and so on okay now why is this important because we have seen in our very first mcq that in series force is same and elongations are added have you got that elongations get added and we have to find the net elongation right 
we have to find the net elongation and that's why integration is required there. To find the net elongation, integration is required because in series, same force will act on all the wires. So the elongations will be different. Raise your hands if you understand this. Okay, yes. Now, can we find the elementary elongation? Elementary elongation. Okay, it will be elementary elongation. Let us find it out. Okay, our formula is uh, there, right? Our formula is uh, elementary elongation is um, what is that? F L by E. Okay, F L by A E. That is our or A Y. Sorry, in engineering we call Young's model as E. So F L by A Y. Now, please pay attention. Force is same. So this is not going to change mg that's same l is our dx now okay okay l is our dx area is something that we need to take care of we don't know what area is because radius is changing and young's modulus is here okay so in this elementary elongation we have covered both the integrand and the variable of integration variable of integration will come here because uh not x of course not x because x is the distance but uh, we can remove the radius using that. Have you got this particular part till now? Till elementary elongation? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, great. Now, if you don't understand how we can calculate radius at any arbitrary distance x, I would like you to uh, visualize a situation from geometry, a situation like this. Okay. Consider this as our x-axis, okay, consider this as your x-axis and uh, let this, uh, th let there be a line, okay, oh, okay, wait, let, let me first draw the y-axis, suppose this is our y-axis and suppose I pick a point here whose coordinates are 0, comma capital R and suppose I pick another point here whose uh, coordinates are L, comma 3, cap uh, 3 capital R and suppose uh, this is a line that I take. Okay, this is a line that I take. Okay, this is a line that I take and I need to know the radius. So essentially I need to know uh, the y coordinate of this point in terms of x. So, okay, this is x, right? So can we find y? Yes, I need to basically know the equation of that line. So let's use 2.4. So uh, y minus y1 is equal to slope into uh, x minus x1, x1 and 0. Okay, and can you find the slope? Why not? y2 minus y1, 3r minus uh, r is 2r on l2 minus l1, x2 minus l1 itself. Okay, so how much is y? y is equal to r plus 2rx by l. Okay, raise your hand if you understand this. And that is actually our radius. That is actually our radius. So what should be plugged in here? That's why. Okay. Therefore, net elongation, net elongation will be integral as x goes from uh, 0 to L. Okay. Mg by pi y I am deliberately writing this part separately and that too we can take r squared here. Okay, so it will effectively be uh, 1 plus 2x, 2x by l the whole squared dx. Have you understood this? Yes sir. Okay, very good. Do we have mg upon pi y r squared? mg upon pi y r squared is there and uh, we, we know that we'll somehow also get that L. Okay, so let's just continue integrating the remaining part. Okay, which integration I'm, I'm talking about? x goes from 0 to L, 1 upon uh, 2 by L x plus 1 the whole square. First thing is that derivative of 1 upon x is negative 1 upon x squared. So I can write this as, pay attention now, this is important, integration will come into play now. 
negative 1 upon 2x by L plus 1 but this should get multiplied by L by 2. Why L by 2? Because the rule of integration says that if integral of f is g, integral of f of a x plus b will be g of a x plus b upon a. So here the coefficient of x is 2 by L. We have to multiply our final answer by reciprocal of that. So that's L by 2. Okay. What about limits? What about limits? Limits are 0 and L. Okay. Limits are 0 and L. Okay. So don't forget that L by 2. That is important. Now let us put the upper limit in our uh, L location. Okay. So it's negative 1 upon LL will go. So this will be 1 upon 3 minus negative 1 upon x0. So this will be 1. Okay. So it's L by 2 into Mm, okay. What is that? Minus 1 upon 3 plus 1. Oh, 2 by 3 is what we are getting. Right? Okay. Oh, okay. So, did we get... Uh, okay, so that got 1 upon 9 there. Okay, so L by 3 is what we should look for. L by 3. So, correct option is option C. Clear? Okay, let me just check. Uh, are we sure that we are not getting uh, 2 by 3? Okay, let us check our calculation. Mm. Okay, for 0 it will be 1 and for L it will be 3 negative 1 upon 3 plus 1 yes okay correct 2 by 3 root will get cancelled L by 3 so what is the option now option is C any doubt yes any doubt in this sum no sir well alternately we could have also just integrated uh, integrated 1 plus uh, 2x with l being 1 okay look we could have uh, also done something like this 1 upon 1 plus okay 2 times x i'm taking uh, l as 1 with uh, lower limit 0 and upper limit 1 and that would that gives me 1 upon 3 Right, that gives me 1 upon 3, and it's the same answer that we've got here, L by 3. Okay, that's the same answer, L by 3. Fine.